not occupy the same space. No, that's right. Look at JD, I told you, man, he is a machine. My name's uh, Dr. Phil Aguilar, a.k.a. Pastor Phil Aguilar, a.k.a. The Chief. And this event is our uh, Sunday night set free magic warehouse recovery meeting we do every Sunday night. Every Sunday night, every Sunday night, our, every, our regular time is 6 to 8 every Sunday night. You can bring your own chair, you know, vaping is allowed, you know. You gotta smoke, you gotta smoke, gotta do what you gotta do, but uh, glad to have you there. Uh, I hope you hug somebody tonight. We're educating and letting people know how fentanyl is just taking our kids and adults out. It's a poison, it's not an overdose. It is a privilege to be part of this community, recovery. Hello, my brothers back there, all in red, yes. Hey, how are you? Good to have you here tonight. Gosh. Oklahoma! Oklahoma! Yeah! yeah. I am from the Set Free Tribe. Yeah! You know, the Fungawis. My friend Sunday, where's Sunday? Is she there? Come up here and give us one minute about that and then say hello to everybody. My name is Nohe Alani Ho'okano Casperson. I have been a part of Set Free, which has transitioned to the Magic House recently, which has now um, had these Sunday night recovery events, um, one of them being the Facing Fentanyl event. Yeah. Hi, everybody. We're so glad that you guys are here. Like, we really don't get to have this much fun without all of you guys, old friends and new friends and all of the relatives that come to visit us. And we're all around this cause of recovery, right? Everyone being around this cause and rallying around this cause that uh, is not really spoken about, you know? It wasn't until a couple of years ago that it was brought to my attention. And I have uh, 20, 19, 17, and 15 year olds at home. And so having those conversations with my boys and my girl and saying, hey, do we know what this is? So yes, we are starting Monday Night Misfits. It will be at seven o'clock at New Song Church, and we're super excited for that. If you 
have a whole variety book, bring it with you. We're going to do some book study and some time together. But if you don't, that's okay too. If you have lots of experience, welcome. If you have no experience, welcome. We love to see all of our relatives come with us and go through the process of wellness together. I hope to see you all tomorrow night as well. And our traveling evangelist for our magic house and everything we do and facing and fighting and fed and all, our own Mike Fiore. What's up guys? So uh, first and foremost, I do want to thank everybody for coming out today because things like this don't happen unless we all come together and we all become one voice. The event's name is uh, Fight to Save Lives. It's our fentanyl awareness and prevention uh, event. Uh, between Face and Fentanyl as well as Magic House. And basically we're here to just let people know the dangers of illicit fentanyl, um, the impact it's having across the nation, not just you know individual communities. It's now everybody's problem. So we feel uh, the solution is everybody coming together to become one voice. Uh, so while we're here, you know, the message at church today is that you are cherished, right? So I just real quick, if you don't cherish your life just yet, I do want you to take a look at these banners though. And look at all these faces. We could probably fill blocks and blocks and blocks for banners right so you know like cherish your life you know like there's a lot of us here i'm pretty sure that have lost people to fentanyl right a lot of these faces that you're seeing on these banners don't aren't aren't addicts like us though these are people that were trying for the first time recreationally or experimentally and they're not here no more i think it's our obligation and the fact that we're still here though that we get loud with our stories we get loud with our voice because the more and more they hear our testimonies, whether it's you know from fentanyl addiction and you overcame it, or you're still in the grips of fentanyl, or if you lost somebody to fentanyl poisoning, like the world needs to start hearing these stories. I moved to California May 10th of last year after I graduated treatment. Um, living out here for a while, I had some things going on as where I was living in Riverside, moved to Orange County, uh, went through a, a breakup, my first breakup while being in uh, recovery and um, needed some kind of mentorship, needed a tribe. I came across, you know, Chief Phil Aguilar, uh, asked him to be my mentor. And then since then, you know, Magic House has become my family. Magic House has uh, been a place for me to blossom. Uh, reason being mostly you love where you're at and basically, you know, uh, mistakes are made and, you know, Directions need to be given and advice and you know magic house just knows how to do it with such a sense of love where you don't feel like a failure and you don't feel like a disappointment and you don't beat yourself up when you make these mistakes magic house just you know the doors are always wide open for people like us to come until we get the ball rolling you know I, I'm, I'm very loud with my recovery I do not believe that we need to be anonymous Woo! anymore I don't think what? that this is the time that we're living it we're not dealing with alcohol and we're not just dealing with heroin no more we're dealing with a drug that's 50 to 100 times stronger than anything that's ever been out on the streets right and why people are using drugs has not changed from why we started doing drugs these kids aren't getting the opportunity to make the drug their solution like it was for us because for a long time it was the solution to the problem until it actually became the problem right so there's no reason why you should be ashamed or even feel judged because you're going to share your story because there's a 13 or 12 year old a 10 year old kid out there that if you're becoming anonymously in a room how are they going to hear your story how are they going to be you know like let them know that they're not alone right so real quick does anybody here want to want to be blessed or want to feel blessed yeah good good and james it says mercy triumphs judgment we don't like being judged by people. We need to stop judging each other in our own circle, in our own community. The recovery community is just as divided as anything else. Who cares if you're on methanol? Who cares if you're on suboxone? If your life is getting better right now, you keep working what you're working. Why are we putting each other down? Fentanyl and drugs might have brought us to this place. But when we go from this place, we need to allow that to catapult us to save lives. I'm tired of someone dying every five minutes, right? Every five minutes, someone's dying. I'm tired of parents burying their kids, kids burying their parents, brothers burying their sisters, sisters burying their brothers, and friends burying their friends. So my question to you right now today, are we going to allow somebody to die every five minutes anymore? So we need to start getting louder with our stories. I love every single one of you. I'm a product of Magic House with gold diggers here. So if you don't think you got treasure, stay with us because we'll dig it out of you and we'll go buy some things together. Thank you. Uh, Facing Fentanyl Now is a project that is uh, through the foundation of Voices for Awareness. Voices for Awareness, I'm the director of outreach as well as communications. The executive director, Andrea Thomas, unfortunately lost her daughter Ashley five years ago to a half a counterfeit pill. Um, and that, you know, set her off. So she started her foundation and just started getting information and, you know, getting loud with her voice and connected with other families impacted. 
I'm Andrea. I've met most of you now, and I don't think I've ever left here without feeling a hundred times better than when I when I got here that morning. You know, a lot of you know my story about my daughter, Ashley, 32 years old, died from half of a counterfeit pill. She's one of the faces on these banners. You know, since y'all started walking with us, our army has grown. Yeah. You're sharing our message. Every time I see one of you, I get a little bit more information, some more insight. Today I heard two of the best stories. I met a young lady about seven months ago at Magic House. She needed a bed. And, you know, I'm not going to find it. You guys, are, you guys are the ones that know how to do this, right? But I wanted to go pray with her. I went outside and she couldn't speak. I've never met a person in my life that was screaming for help with their eyes like she was. Today, I heard that she's six months clean. Yeah. 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 I met another young lady today that uh, we had been saying some prayers about, hoping that she would be here. And I met her today here at Magic House. Exactly where she needs to be, right? With yep. the family, people that can help her, people that love her. Prevention and awareness is very key, right? Like get into the message to the kids because the message used to be, don't do drugs because it'll ruin your life. The message now is don't do drugs because you're going to die. The reason being is right now in our country, there's a life being lost every five minutes to a fentanyl poison. Since I started working with Mike, he has sat at tables uh, with the DEA, with uh, Homeland Security. He sat with a lot of people he never expected to sit with. I want to see you all at those tables yeah. because you're making such a huge difference. When you share your stories, Please share them with us. Send them to me. Tell Mike. We need your stories to wake other people up, to save people, Amen. so they don't end up on these banners. Yeah. Everybody knows you guys now <laughs> across the United States. And the good news is they're starting to bring recovery in. By saying poison over overdose, what's going to happen is these kids won't think, why would I take one pill and overdose? But if we could get out there, and this is what we believe, if we could get out there the right way to speak on it. Ten days before I lost Ashley, she, she put a post out. It's that picture that you guys have probably seen of her. She was beautiful. She was having a great day. And she was sitting in the front seat of her car where they found her ten days later. Overdose, poisoned from fentanyl. But on that day, she said, today was a good day. You could see it, it was just beaming from her. Every time I come here, we say, today was a good day. Let's do this every day. Yeah. Let's go! So the collaboration of the families impacted by fentanyl poison and the recovery community as one now is just being very powerful and it's being heard all over the country. My son is a... Um, Addict right now, he's addicted to fentanyl, and um, I got involved in this experience because I was asked to speak out as a mother that fentanyl has affected their family. I got 10 days sober today. Not, I don't just have 10 days, I got 10 days sober. That's what I got, you know. I'm a recovering fentanyl addict, I've been in an addict for about four years. Um, the same week that I got addicted to fentanyl, my cousin died from an overdose. I had a um, very close dear friend of mine overdose and so I had to Narcan him and it's probably one of the scariest moments of my life. Just keep uh, supporting the vids on fentanyl because the fact that my son's father had overdose on it six times and um... If you're out there using man and if it's fent Man, you're, you're playing Russian roulette with your life, man. You never know when that last one's going to be your, your last, that last hit or that last shot or whatever it may be. My experience with the fentanyl was, um, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I've done this before in pill form, so let me just do a little bit. And when I did, um, it didn't matter. I just went out immediately. So what that sparked in my heart was this isn't, you know, these aren't overdoses. There is no safe dose of this, drug, of this substance. It's poison. The, the lies that it's taking, it's just made such a great impact on my life and seeing the, uh, the value of not just my own life, but the value of my other brothers and sisters and those out there suffering from addiction to fentanyl. 
we're tired of our kids and our families and our communities being destroyed by fentanyl, and we're here to do what we can to stop it. And us as a group of people understand what it's like to be in the grips of those places, but also how to get out of those places. There's thousands of people out there that have been in the same situation as, as where I'm sure some people are watching this now. Like, they're scared to ask for help. They don't know what it means. I keep on coming back every week to share my story, hoping that somebody can find hope in mine and they can find hope for their life, for their recovery. Find your community, find your tribe, and stay in the middle because it's hard to fall off the cliff when you're in the middle of the pack. I got introduced to this new sense of community, like I walk in the front door and every single person acts like they knew me for my whole life. Just reach as many people as possible and being a part of the Magic House here, that's exactly what we do is we reach out, you know, we go where the pizza man doesn't deliver, so they say. When I was in prison, uh, I was there and I was a heroin addict, drug addict. So when I got released from prison back in the day, I decided I wanted to help people, people like myself, people who were doing drugs, alcohol problems. And it was just cold turkey kicking, helping people get off the streets who didn't have any money or insurance, things like that. And then through the years, it developed to where we started opening up homes to take people in, discipleship programs, and been doing this for the last uh, few decades now. The magic part is the magic is Jesus, and the warehouse is because I used to do it at my house, at my personal house, but we just outgrew it. And every week, it just seems like more people all the time. We come together weekly just to be an encouragement, you know, just to bring new music because so many people are young people. And uh, the Magic Warehouse right now, we've got a gym where people can train, exercise. We try to do everything we can to get people's attention, to bring them in, to love them right where they're at, to respect them, to appreciate them, to give them community. We know that the opposite of addiction is community. And I'm an old cat, but I'm mentoring a bunch of young people and spread the good news that there's a place where they can come to for free. We celebrate people's 30 days or 60 days or 90 days clean and uh, special birthdays in their life. We just do everything, come together with a little music, a little dancing, a little fun, and a little getting high on Jesus. I think it was like the last year or two New Song Church came about and being over there and, and working with our First Nations families. I loved him right away because I knew he was different and I knew that misfit people, people on the fringe would love this guy. So I've always had an admiration and respect for Chief, uh, but it wasn't until recently when I met Chief and Mike Fiore and the team at Magic House that, man, my respect grew even more because I saw how they have dedicated their lives to work with people in marginalized places, uh, people who are typically overlooked by a lot of organizations. Oh, we get into service. We jump right into service, man. If you're able-bodied, we got chairs we need to put out, tables we need to move, trash we can pick up. It start, you start small, but if you find the joy in the little things, like it says in Zechariah 4.10, do not despise small beginnings because, heck, heck, I started here putting out about 20, 40 chairs um, at 7 in the morning every Sunday with Chief, and now I'm the maintenance man here. They stay with them, and they support them. And so I got so... Uh, engage with it that you know I've been going as much as I can to the Magic House meetings on Sunday nights and I'll tell you what it's become my family it's become my community and I'm proud of them all across America people are coming to the Magic House they eradicate all the toxic stuff that's been going on in their bodies and make them entirely new just reset them and reboot them to experience your love right now your healing touch, and most of all, your loving presence. Heal them right now, God. 
Thank you, my pastor there. The reason we're here is because connection. That's what we need. You know, we're a community coming together. You know, people relapse, but get back up again. We do that all the time in our lives. You know, one day at a time. I want to thank all of you that are going to stick around and clean up. I want to thank you in advance. You know what I mean? Heavenly Father, thank you for everybody here tonight. Thank you for all the encouragement for so many people, Lord. And I just pray, like Pastor Dave said, that this week would be filled with miracles and that your tender Holy Spirit, Lord, would comfort each and every one of us. Get us ready. And if we if we do have next week, I just look forward to it already. And I'm thankful just for everything you're doing. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. You are perfect. You deserve it. You just didn't know you were worth it. You are special. There's no one like you. Just believe in yourself. Don't doubt you. Because you are worth it. Because you are. I never realized I knew my own strength That I can move mountains with just one touch of faith But never could see past my past heartbreaks and mistakes Until you showed me a new mirror Started seeing clearer Former things have passed away made for so much more than this I've been kissed by an angel blessed with so many 